the magic of uh, Cook's uh, theorem. So in order to show that every NP problem is reducible to a SAT problem, clearly in order to be able to speak about every NP problem, we have to formalize the notion of NP computability rather than just mentioning as we did in the regular class that that's uh, something that you can verify uh, by a polynomial time algorithm uh, given the right guess. We have to be more specific so just to be able to uh, translate uh, every NP problem uh, so we need a model of computation. So the most standard model, and uh, probably the earliest one, is the model with uh, Turing machines. How many of you have seen Turing machines? Uh, where have you seen a Turing machine? I'm very curious. <laughs> um, so a Turing machine is a theoretical construct that is used precisely to formulate the notion of computability in general, just to formulate the notion that something can be computed at all, right? Uh, because uh, what are the operations that we are allowed to use in our algorithm? For example, if I have a primitive operation, uh, a Hamiltonian circuit of a graph, uh, right, the, clearly we, we don't know how to implement this. Uh, so um, in order to specify exactly what we mean by NP computability, we first introduce a notion of computability at all via Turing machines, right? So Turing machines uh, are theoretical kind of devices that consists of an infinite tape in both directions, right? And the tape is divided into cells and kind of plays the role of the memory of your theoretical computer, right? Uh, then we have a reading head, reading and writing head, that can at each instant in time that it can scan one cell only, right? Um, then we have a collection of symbols. Uh, so symbols, uh, say um, they are uh, the set of uh, S0, which we call blank, right? and then some other symbols, S1, S2, a finite number of them up to SK. So the content of each cell can be either blank, right, or one of these finitely many symbols. Of course, it's enough to have just blank and zero and one uh, without impacting much the efficiency of the calculation using this machine. Now, your head uh, executes computation in steps. At each step, the machine can uh, read the content of the cell where the head, which the head is scanning, and uh, it can change the symbol being read into another symbol, and it can move the head, the machine can move the head to the left or to the right precisely for one cell, okay? Uh, besides that, the machine also has finitely many states. <coughs> uh, let's call them <coughs> Uh, sigma zero, which is initial state. Then uh, sigma one, which is called 
accepting state and uh, uh, sigma 2, which is uh, a refuting state, and plus uh, sigma 3, sigma 4, up to certain sigma m, right? <coughs> so you can think of the tape as, uh, uh, say, a hard drive, right? And uh, states of, machi of the machine are the state of all different combination of uh, states of the flip-flops in the machine. So they are internal states, right? So this is, uh, um, and we can assume that just for explanatory purposes that the cells are indexed just so that we can speak minus one, minus two, and so forth, right? Um, now, on top of it, so this is the, so to speak, the underlying machine. On top of it, the a machine also has a program. What is a program? A program is simply a table. It's a, a table that looks like this. Uh, here we list all the states. So this will be sigma 0, sigma 1, all the way to, what did we say, Sig, uh, sigma m. And here on top, right, in each column, you have symbols. Uh, so that will be uh, S0, uh, S1, all the way to SK. Yeah? OK? And now for each state, say SJ, sorry, uh, each symbol, say SJ, and each state, say sigma, um, uh, sigma I, in this cell of the table, we have the following. It tells the machine which new symbol it's supposed to put. Uh, how to replace so a new symbol as j prime, right? Uh, it tells the machine in what next state it should go, uh, some sigma uh, i prime. And it tells the machine whether it should move uh, plus or minus one cell to the left and to the right. So um, this is called program or a transition table. OK, so it's simply, so simply when machine reads here a symbol SJ, right? Then its control, which, is, which embodies this table, will tell it. Uh, and if it's at the, that moment, is it's in the state sigma i. Uh, so if the machine is in state sigma i and read cells cj, the table will instruct the machine to change this symbol from sj to sj prime. Uh, to change its internal state from sigma i to sigma i prime, and to either move one cell to the left and one, or one cell to the right. Now, the claim, this is of course the model called uh, Turing machine, right, by Alan Turing. Uh, the claim, and pretty bold claim, right, is uh, 
that you can compute something at all if and only if you can write a program for a Turing machine so the Turing machine stops after finitely many steps and if it's a decision problem it will stay if it stops in sigma 1 accepting state it means uh, your predicate is true if it stops in a refuting state it means your predicate is false so for example if this was a Turing machine that solves primality problem input is written in cells from C0 up to whatever many um, cells you need to write your input machine always starts in the initial state sigma zero and uh, depending on the um, it will start performing so machine can read and write on this tape if eventually stops in the accepting state it means yes the number is prime if it steps in a refuting state it means no uh, the problem is uh, uh, the, the, your prime is not uh, <coughs> your number is not prime you can slightly modify that uh, instead of having accepting and refuting state you can have a sigma sig single uh, state let's call it sigma one star which is the halting state if the machine stops in halting state uh, that's for polynomial time computability not of predicates but of functions then the result for this input is whatever is written on the tape right so this will be the value of uh, if you if your program computes f the value of f of x will be whatever is on the tape when the machine holds a hits halting state um, what is truly amazing that this uh, is enough to capture any computable problem right any computable function is that the operation of the machine is totally local machine has no other memory except finitely many states that's the only different states are you can think of them as uh, uh, internal memory of the machine uh, and whatever is written on the tape and yet the operation is absolutely local which means uh, regardless of where the head is if it reads the same symbol and it's in the same state as here it will have to do exactly the same thing you cannot tell it do something here and something else here the specification is completely local and it depends only on the instantaneous state of the machine and on the content of only the cell that it's reading at that very moment and yet despite this uh, restriction of highly local property uh, in fact anything that is in principle computable is computable on a Turing machine now how do we know what does it mean in principle computable there are other computational models like von Neumann machine uh, but you can prove uh, that something is computable on a von Neumann machine if and only if it's computable on a Turing machine uh, maybe with a more kind of involved program but uh, the two models are equivalent and in fact in early 20th century when people started thinking about computability there were several proposed models also something that even today computer scientists use uh, called lambda calculus 
But one can show that all of these models are equivalent. Anything computable in one of them, it's computable in all others uh, as well. Uh, so, um, and uh, you know, because of that fact that no matter how you formalize computability reasonably, you end up with the same class is why this is in fact, in fact taken as a model of computability. Okay. Now, we say that something is computable in polynomial time if the operation of the machine lasts at most, so the machine will hit halting state or either accepting or refuting state after polynomially many steps in the length of the input. So if you uh, recorded certain k many symbols and machine all, and your program corresponds to polynomial time computable function operating in quadratic time, it means that this machine will stop at c times uh, um, uh, whatever is the length of the input to that power, the quadratic power, for example. Now, what does it mean that something is computable in non-deterministic time? We somehow have to get, uh, provide what is the guess. Well, this is simply kind of a figure of speech because by that we mean that a predicate is computable non-deterministically in polynomial time if and only if there exists a string of symbols that you can place here on the left so that uh, with these two inputs, the machine will accept, uh, eventually stop in accepting st state after polynomially many steps. So for example, uh, to give you just an example would be if this is encoding of a graph with its vertices and edges, and this encodes a permutation of the vertices, and it's the right permutation for a Hamiltonian cycle, then this program will simply verify that this permutation, uh, in fact, goes, uh, uh, that the edges go uh, uh, only along the encoded edges of the graph. Um, sometimes this is kind of defined in a more fancy way without uh, specifying uh, that there is something here. You simply say the machine does the following. It starts writing randomly symbols here polynomially many for polynomial amount of time and then it switches into regular polynomial execution. But this is kind of um, I don't know, it's not terribly explanatory. Uh, just saying that uh, you provide an, a, a guess uh, for the solution on the left is good enough. So, so something is computable in, something is in NP, if and only if I can put some symbols here and then with certain program, run, let the machine run, and if for some values here, machine stops in the accepting state, we say that uh, the predicate is true. If it stops in the refuting state, then we say that the predicate is uh, false. Uh, so we now, what Cook's theorem says, uh, it, of course, has to be specific. So it says, if something is computable on a non-deterministic Turing machine, which is just a regular deterministic Turing machine plus a guess written on the left, uh, then, uh, so then it is a, a polynomial time reducible to the question of satisfiability of a Boolean formula. So the idea is how to encode the computation, any computation, by uh, 
a Boolean formula. So notice uh, this, uh, this transition, it cannot specify exactly what the machine is doing. It just has to specify that for some gas, it stops in an accepting state. Okay, how do we do that? I'll explain to you this very simple by um, essentially the formula says that something is a valid execution of a Turing machine. So assume the following, we have the camera over there, right? And you go home to watch the recording of this class. And suddenly on the same, in the same frame, you see Alex standing here and another Alex standing there. What would you conclude about the recording? That someone has tampered with it, right? Because if this is an honest to God recording of this class, it can never happen that I am here and simultaneously I am over there, right? Another thing would be assume you see me there and then suddenly I am here, right? Uh, obviously some glitch in recording had to happen because it's missing uh, the frames that show that I am actually moving from there to here. That's precisely what Cook's formula does. Cook's formula does is this. It examine each, examines sequence of frames and determines whether each next frame is a correct transition of the machine from the previous frame. Okay? So, in order to do this, uh, we have to introduce lots of propositional variables. First of all, notice that say the machine runs in times, in time, uh, say C times uh, um, n to the k time, right? So n is the length of the input. Then is the entire tape relevant for the computation? What do you think? If the machine has to stop after C times n to the k many steps, and in each steps, step it can move only one cell to the left or one cell to the right. That is the bound of the space that possibly machine can use. So for that purpose, we can cut off the tape from here to here, right? Where this here is uh, C times N to the K, and also from here to here is C times N to the K. And we can ignore the rest because in that time, the machine couldn't scan any other cells. So I have at most C times N to the K stages of computation, and at most two times c to the n to the k uh, cells that are involved. So for each stage of calculation, and for all of these two times c and k cells, I'll introduce a propositional variable, right? So cell i j, is to be interpreted as uh, uh, at um, at stage. Um, uh, sorry, I need another variable k for the content of the cell. So i j k at stage i of computation. A uh, cell J contains symbol uh, symbol K. 
So this intended meaning of this variable is this variable will be set to true if and only if at the eighth step of computation the content of cell J, so let's see uh, here this will be for all i that go between uh, so zero to initial stage right up to uh, c times n to the k j goes between minus c n to the k to c times n to the k uh, now i'm using k for uh, okay so uh, let's call this m i j symbol m Symbol, 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 M. Thanks. Right? So, and then M will go between zero and how many symbols we had? Zero? Oh, God, we now have M symbols. <laughs> okay, so this is capital M. Okay? Uh, and uh, this K... Uh, Okay, let's see, states, this will be capital K, uh, and uh, you get the idea. <laughs> and here is capital M. Okay, so here, of course, uh, uh, capit uh, uh, M will go between zero, and for the symbols, how many of them did I have? Symbols, capital, oh, now I had it. A capital K, right? Now notice, this is polynomially many variables, uh, propositional variables. Lots of them, true, but it will be how many? N to the K times 2 to the ti uh, N to the K times capital K, many. Okay. So now we can speak, quote unquote, about the content of all relevant cells at any uh, stage of the computation. That's the trick. Okay, now what else do we need? We need the position of the head, right? So let's have another set of variables, h, i, uh, j that says the following, at stage i of computation, uh, cell, uh, sorry, head uh, reads cell uh, j. So this variable will tell us at the i, after i transitions of the Turing machine, where exactly the cell will be. And clearly, right, at any stage, there will be just one j where the cell is. So this is, we can speak about the content of the tape, where the head is, we now have to be able to speak about the state of the machine at state at stage i uh, j, which means at stage i of computation, the machine is in state. Uh, sorry, yeah, is in uh, state uh, j. Again, how many variables do we need? We need uh, uh, i again between 0 and c times n to the k. And uh, uh, we need also how many uh, uh, j ranges over all state between 0 and the largest state is m. So again, that's a lot of variables, but polynomially 
many. This is the language, right, that we can describe the operation of the Turing machine. And what the formula says is that uh, some, that uh, a sequence of steps is a correct execution of the Turing machine. So what do we have to say? Oh, gosh. Okay, so let me move back here. So what do we have to say? So our formula phi, the intended meaning is uh, phi encodes uh, a correct run of uh, Turing machine. Let's see how we express this. What are the constraints? Well, <coughs> first of all, we have to say that at every stage of the computation, each cell can contain only one symbol, right? How do we say that? We say conjunction for all i's that go between 0 and c times n to the k, so for every stage. And for every j, which is between minus c n to the k and c times n to the k. So this says for every stage, this says for every uh, cell and for every symbol k and k prime uh, that are between uh, uh, zero and uh, uh, how many symbols do we have? K, right? Capital K. Sorry? What should be M? Oh, yes, K and K instead, that's right. So let's put M. OK, and for every M and M prime, if M is not equal to M prime, so for all of the numbers satisfying this, we have that cell I, J, uh, M, not this or not uh, C, um, C, I, J, M prime. What does this big conjunction say? How do you read this? It simply says that for every two different symbols, at any stage of the computation, and for every cell, it's either it's not the case that the symbol is M or that the symbol is M prime. So it's impossible that both this without the negation is true and this is true. Right? Do you understand the formula? So for every stage, of uh, the calculation, this cannot be, uh, the cell cannot contain two symbols, but we have to also add um, that it contains a symbol. So we have to add and, and then this junction of, and we can put brackets here, I guess, and then a big disjunction over all m between 0 and k, a capital K, right of C, I, J, uh, M. Right? So this bit says 
there must be one symbol, maybe blank, but there always in every state of the computation, each cell contains something, but it is impossible to contain two symbols in the same time. So this is how you say, uh, so this would be to say that uh, in every frame of this recording, there will be one Alex standing somewhere, but it can never be two Alexes standing, right? So that's this part. Okay, so now what we have to say, we have to say, and you can take it uh, for kind of granted, uh, you can write a similar formula about the state of a machine. Huh? Well, okay, let's write it. So what we would, would we have to say? We have to say the following. For every stage of the computation, right, uh, the state uh, uh, and uh, uh, for every uh, state, uh, uh, state j and uh, j uh, uh, prime that are between zero and the number of states uh, is uh, uh, m. If j is not equal to j prime, then we have either it is not that state i the machine is in, sorry, step i the machine is in state j, and uh, uh, so it's either this or it is not that the si j prime. What does this say? This simply says that for every stage of the computation, either the machine is not in the state of j or it is not in a different state of j prime. It's impossible for two states uh, that the machine is in both states simultaneously. And then, of course, you have to add and uh, uh, disjunction over all uh, uh, j's, right, c, i, j, right? For all, uh, let's put it, uh, for all uh, steps between uh, 0 and c times n to the k, uh, at least always, it's a disjunction of, right, you have a disjunction, so for, you have a conjunction for all steps of a disjunction for this i that uh, at least some, uh, so the machine is always in a state. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. So this simply says, uh, so you just imagine, you know, you imagine that you have this machine and, you know, you can see this animation on YouTube. On YouTube. Uh, you simply, you know, they show you how the machine moves the head, how it changes states. So you, this formula simply say that the sequence of shots that these people provided on YouTube indeed is a correct computation, right? So now we have to say that the only symbol that can change is one that is being scanned. How do we say that? Uh, well, we have to say something like this that is easy to convert in propositional formula. You will have to say uh, for every state of computation, so it will be conjunction of all i's that go between 0 and c times n to the k. At every state, uh, you will have the following. And for every two, um, and for every symbol j that is between 0 and the number of symbols, which is uh, uh, 
M. Symbols are? No, states, oh, that, yeah, 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 thank you. Symbols are K. So uh, symbols K, right? And uh, for every other J prime symbol, in the, if J is not equal to J1, then you will say uh, uh, content at i at cell j. Ah, so now I am uh, using content of. Uh, um, so I want to say these. These are the symbols. So the symbol. Uh, so this. Yeah, yeah. The cell j. Uh, and now I have to say which. Okay, let me see. So this is the stage of the computation. This is, uh, and I have to index over all cells. So I'll have, uh, say, P also that goes between minus Cn to the K to Cn to the K. So for at stage I, the cell P, if it contains J, um, right, then, of course, this can be eliminated in terms of negation in this junction, but it's easier to write it like this. Then, either the head uh, scans uh, um, at stage i, um, it scans the cell p, uh, or uh, c, um, uh, so what do I want to say? I want to say the following, if the content of the, at stage i, of cell p is j, then in the next step, the content of the same stage will be also j, or the machine scans this p. So do you understand what this says? If the content at stage i of the computation of cell p is a symbol j, yeah? then either at the next stage of computation the symbol will remain j, or the head must be scanning that cell. So the only way that at stage a plus 1 the content of the cell is different will be if the head was at stage a I, so we are simply saying, uh, you see, that uh, if a cell was, had some content, uh, next stage it must have the same content unless the head was exactly above that cell and could change it, uh, right? So either it will be exactly the same unless the head was over p. And, uh, okay, we can, we'll continue next time. So these are the basic assumptions that simply say uh, the, com co the calculation has proceeded, the, the frames are consistent one with the following one. But we have to say more things. Uh, but you get kind of the main flavor.